Hi, I'm Ted Bollinger with TVS Pro, and in this video, we are going to be comparing side by side the UHZ, the Optima UHZ65, and the upgraded UHZ65, which we've done here at TVS Pro. This has been done over the course of the last 11 months, and um, so that there's no confusion and a full disclosure, I helped develop this projector because I love the expanded color. Uh, this happens to be uh, a scene, and we'll take a look at those when they're side by side, from Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. And we'll be using this screen. We wanted to see, we wanted to show that the screen itself is 133 inch diagonal, 235 to 1, but we'll be putting two 16 by 9 together side by side. This is a Stuart uh, reference Studio Tech 130 screen that we'll be using for this comparison today. To compare the two projectors, we've set them up side by side. This is the same thing we do for our local customers who can see this comparison live. The challenge um, is that in recording this is synchronizing, as you can see, the camera shutter speed with the frame rate and also even the ISO we found affects this. So three things to keep in mind. One of them, you may see some of these sync bars. That's not the projectors. You cannot see that with your eye. That's only through the camera. The second thing is the wide color gamut um, can only be seen on a wide color gamut display. So unless you have a 4K HDR like an OLED, um, you're not going to see much of the differences, but we will show you actual measurements, so you will see the differences live. And the third thing is there are some motion artifacts due to the combination of shutter speed and frame rates. But what you will be able to see is some of the black level and contrast and exactly where the color falls. In this scene, we're going to pause it. If you, if you really want to see some nice examples of wide color, this opening scene from Guardians of the Galaxy 2 has this creature that they're attacking, that's attacking uh, the batteries and they're attacking it. In any case, it spews out colored gases, which you're going to see in just a minute. And it, it really is great on a projector like the UHG 65. On the upgraded version, it's just that more dynamic because of the rich color. So I'm going to put this into motion, and I'm going to pause it here in a couple of places where uh, you'll see a wide range of color, and you'll be able to do a little bit of comparison. So there, um, Again, it'll depend a little bit on the display, a lot on the display you're looking at this, but on the right, there are some really rich orange yellows and golds that um, just give it more pop. There's also more contrast. We'll roll this a little bit more, and uh, you'll see some, some really nice magenta colors, and you should be able to see some of these differences because there's just a lot richer color there and it really helps make the scene pop it it's it's just you're not used to seeing this on a projector so to see it it, it the, the increased contrast gives you depth but the color just gives it a dynamic uh about it that's just amazing there you can see some of the differences in the green because the green um, on the right and the upgraded uh, is very, very close to, it's, it's within about 15%, 18% of the full Rec 2020 color. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, what you're looking at now um, is the computer connected to the color meter. The color meter is on the right and it's pointed at the upgraded extended wide color gamma and we're going to zoom in we're going to do this in one straight uh, take so that you can see what's happening between the two projectors because I'm afraid from what I, we've seen on our test most people are not going to be able to see the color differences unless you've got a really good display but this because you're going to be able to see it on the the actual computer screen will show you where the color gamut is so I'm going to move here out of the way so you can see the screen and what we have done is on both these projectors, we've sampled the cyan, the white point, the magenta, and the blue. And we're going to sample the yellow. So I'm going to move here and select the yellow from the software. And I'm manually now going to take a sample. And when it reads the sample, as you can see, it's put the yellow right to the edge of the box in the BT2020. We're now going to go to the green. So I'm going to select green on the software and say I want a sample of that green. 
and when it takes the sample it's going to appear up here. So the white is my cursor that's moving and that's the sample that it just took of the green. The last sample we're going to take is going to be the red and I'm going to choose the red in the software so it knows what we're sampling. We're then going to sample it and it's going to place the sample right over here and as you can see we've reached 80.2 percent of BT2020. So now let's see how that compares. So I'm going to move the color meter over here so that it's going to read it now off the unmodified UHZ 65 and I'm now going to switch to the first three readings that we just did. So here's the same three readings. We sampled magenta, cyan, blue, and the white point. And now we're going to go back and we're going to sample that yellow. So I'm going to choose the yellow in the software and sample it. And you'll see the sample appear up here. And so we'll go to the green. And again, the same thing. We'll select it in software and sample it. So you can see in, in uh, real time where it's placing the samples. And then finally, we're going to do the red. And then when we're done here, we'll compare the two so that you can see them. So here is the red. This is on the unmodified. Now down here, you can see that it tells us what percentage of BT2020 we are. And the unmodified, you can achieve 57.6% uh, of the BT2020. Now, the upgraded projector, which we just sampled, is here. And as you can see, we reached over 80.2%. So that's why you're able to see with your eye a significant difference between the colors in the images. They are um, more vibrant. They are uh, deeper colors. They're colors that you see in nature. Uh, part of the BT-20 was derived from, uh, covers most of the pointer's gamut, which is what the human eye can see in nature. But this, this is showing you the wide color gamut that we're actually achieving, and we'll also show you the differences in the contrast in the blacks as well. One of the things that's always been interesting when we do these comparison videos is how from scene to scene uh, the comparisons can vary quite a bit. Now in this case this is now studio lighting. It's different than what we were just outside a minute ago if we look at the settings. Of course both of these are in HDR. The color on the left is calibrated to minus 10, and the color on the right, the modified projector, is minus 24. Now, I'm going to put this into motion and point out some of the differences um, you'll see. But if you look at some of the colors that are in this scene, particularly skin tone, the, the colors in her shawl thing, um, some of the greens in the background, and as you um, see some of these people coming up. We'll freeze it so you can take a look. Um, even, even the greens, the, there's some cyans and some kind of some oranges and pinks in there, but where you really see a difference is here in these colors and the, the extra contrast that we've been able to add gives it a little more pop. Uh, you can see great detail even in the background. In this scene from the Blu-ray HD disc, uh, the great and powerful Oz, is being up-converted uh, by the projectors side by side with the upgraded one on the right. And we've put the upgraded one in the right in the DCI P3, which is one of the calibrated settings that we set using the uh, expanded color capability, but not all the way to the 80% of Rec 2020. So what's great about this is you can take your existing library and if you want that expanded color that was at some of the better theaters because that's the standard, this allows you to remap those Rec. 709 colors to DCI-P3s and as you'll see in some of the colors, um, again it doesn't affect all of them, but especially the reds, the yellows, the, the purples and the greens, they are expanded color. So if you're looking this on a wide color monitor or if you look at the um, calibration software we showed where the color is going, DCI-P3 is not as far as 80% of Rec. 2020, but it is wider than uh, 709 and that's where you get the improved color, the deeper turquoises, greens, and blues. 
These are some scenes from the 4K Blu-ray disc called uh, Planet Earth 2, and this gives you some great examples in terms of being able to see what your eye sees in nature. It's just that uh, deeper, richer uh, color, colors that you're not used to seeing in a projector that just um, make it really exciting and so we'll let this run for a minute now in some some of the colors as you'll see there's very little difference um, because those are the colors that are supposed to be there this is uh, the planet earth 2 if you're not familiar with it this is 4k HDR content but it's shot at 60 frames now it's running at a little bit slower frame rate than that because we have to synchronize these two with the color wheel so that you don't get uh, bars in the picture which um, can create quite a distraction and make it very hard but here you'll see these colors and these differences in these projectors and keep in mind the projector on the left is about 30 percent brighter but when you're viewing um, content with colors you you see the blacks are a little bit blacker but the colors are so rich that you you it's called the Hemholtz Rollhosch effect and your eye tells you that it's as bright or brighter so uh, we recommend up to about a hundred and forty inch screen this next clip is the same clip we used at the intro to this video which is from Jumanji welcome to the jungle and the projectors are calibrated the same as they have been for the other shots with HDR which is <clears throat> minus 24 on the right and minus 10 on the left for color level and yet so much of that color does still come through and the, the better color gamut that your display you're watching this has, the more you should see some of the differences, particularly in some of the greens um, and the yellows um, and, the, and even the skin tone. It's just a richer and, and you'll definitely see some of the contrast differences. So part of the, the improvement in black levels also helps some of the um, contrast or detail that you see in the picture and it gives it uh, more pop as well w along with the color. So in this scene we want to take a look at the difference in contrast and black levels. So we're putting both into dynamic black one which is a conservative mode. It, when it fades to black here in just a minute we're going to pause it. Um, the projectors do not fade all the way to complete absolute black. They go to a very dark level black but it's at that level the camera can still pick up some of the differences. So we're going to freeze that and as we look at this image you should be able to see the difference between the really good black on the right and the black on the left which is respectable but nowhere near as black as what we're seeing on the right. This is our near black test. This is predominantly a black image but does have some highlights and what we've found with some of the dynamic iris lamp based projectors is that they will dim that white frame way 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 down in order to enhance the black but of course then you don't get the contrast and the dynamic range. Here you're seeing that we've kept most of the brightness but we have been able to enhance the black or the uh, low level of uh, black on the uh, upgraded projector. This is our um, this is our semi-black test that we typically run in comparison to projectors because at the same time they're trying to do good blacks, they've also got some very bright high dynamic whites. I see through the camera that the camera's not able to handle quite the dynamic range so you may see a little flaring that we're not seeing with our eyes but if you look carefully you notice that the background on the right is darker than that on the left. That's the upgraded projectors enhanced uh, black level or low light level and hopefully you can see it a little we've got another test you should be able to see it as well. So the last section of this comparison video we're going to look at some still images I specifically shot these actually just after Cedia last year because I was in Southern California and we knew that they had this uh, this is the paint the night parade uh, at Disneyland and they use pure red green blue LEDs for a lot of this lighting and it is very dramatic and fortunately the camera did capture a lot of it and it's interesting uh, here you can see both the difference in black level uh, I did this twice because it just it seemed like there was more difference here both in color and in black levels than what we were seeing on the video and I think I have some ideas why that that is 
But I think that it's partially because the camera is recording this very wide color gamut, whereas so many of the 4K movies at this point are really only being graded to P3 and then they're tone mapped to 2020. So I think we have a lot to look forward to if this is any indication of what we're really going to be able to see in the future as they start to grade movies with higher color quality for the new standard of BT 2020. Again, you can see the difference in the background levels. You can see the difference in the intensity of the colors. I, I think when the colors are pure, uh, this is RGB uh, LED lighting. Uh, it, it just comes through even though, and I'm even able to see some of this on Rec. 709 much more than I am in some of the 4K HDR movies. So hopefully you will be able to see some of the color and brightness differences on these images. Um, you can see it in the greens, you can see it in the reds and in the yellows, and it's interesting that some of the reds that I see when I watch this on a 709 monitor, they actually look, the ones that are really the deep reds, they look red-orange on a Rec. 709 monitor. And, and this is a uh, color checker chart used by colorists, cinematographers, photographers, it's kind of an industry standard. And if you look at it, you will see very quickly the difference between on the left, and again, this is coming through on Rec. 709, which I don't quite understand, uh, but the yellow uh, on the left is the, you know, closer to Rec. 709, which is kind of a pale yellow. On the right, you can see a deeper yellow. Same thing on the reds. Um, on the right, that red is really a deep very rich red, even though on a 709 monitor, perhaps on the display you're looking at, it may look a little orangey. That's the limitation of the monitor, because if you're looking this on a wide color gamut, that is really a deep red. But there's also some nice subtle differences in some of the other colors. Uh, we've reversed the images on these last three images so that the one is flipped, so you're seeing them, you know, um, exactly the same on both sides as they have been flipped. This concludes this comparison video of the UHZ-65 and the upgraded UHZ-65. And we'd invite you to visit our website at tvspecialist.com. Soon we'll have a specific blog post comparison there with high-resolution stills from this comparison and additional information. And as always, we invite you when you're in Salt Lake or in the area to come in. We'd love to do this live. It, it is so dramatic live in terms of those vibrant colors. And we were, uh, you know, this got delayed because we just couldn't find a way to really show it. And then we decided, okay, well, at least we can show them on the software for color calibration where those colors are falling. And uh, interesting enough, on these last couple of images, it seems to come through. Not quite sure why, but uh, those pure LED lights in that night parade were quite amazing. But again, thanks for watching, and uh, please visit our website.